Trash Talk Radio. Coming at you live on MP3 from high on a hill above beautiful Lake Washington. My name is Lestro and with me as always is the Guru. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. And you know how this goes. We're here to talk a little trash on the week's worth of sports. I don't know anybody except the Guru and the Guru knows all. Man, I know a little something, something, man. Just a little something, man. Guru, it is episode 46, and this week we've got Himes, the director of content at Sports Me, to join us as a Celtics fan in Los Angeles to talk about the NBA season. We're going to ask about his expectations for the upcoming season. Will the Lakers make the playoffs? Did the Raptors get better? And who will win the wide open East? But first, the NFL preseason is finally underway, Guru, and the Browns are making waves. The Browns? Andrew Locke is back, though his neck beard is not. Is it time to get hype? Or is it, Guru? He's got thoughts on this one. You can bet on that. Then, in segment two, Guru continues the countdown to kickoff with his top defensive ends. We got the two-minute drill. And you know we got a game time. Episode number 46, Guru. Let's roll. Ah oh, man, I, uh, it's good to be here with you, buddy. Good to you see you again. You didn't lose a shot of breath on that one, man. You must be doing that. What they do out here in this Pacific Northwest, the CrossFit, huh? Yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do any of that. I'll tell you what, though, I got a, I got a little bit of that breath in me. Uh, I'm, I'm a little tired this week because I had a huge week, man. But what about you? How you doing, brother? Man, I'm living the dream, man. Living the dream. Don't you pinch me, man? That's what I like to hear. Do you have a good week? Yeah, man. I can't complain. Excellent. Can't complain. Nobody listens. <laughs> Dad, this week kind of went like a blur. Yeah, dude. For me too. It this went week, like a blur, man. This I week mean. was absolute madness for me because I uh, I've been waiting all year for this week. I had tickets. <laughs> I had tickets to go see Pearl Jam all year for this week, man. No, seriously, this was the week. I had tickets to go see Pearl Jam at Safeco Field this week. The home shows at Safeco uh, Field this week, man. Man, didn't you give out Pearl Jam's free plug last time too? Now plug them until the <laughs> cows come home. Pearl Jam raised eleven million dollars this week to fight homelessness in Seattle. Whoa, 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 whoa! Time out. What? Eleven million dollars through these shows. So why it takes to go hey, see Wednesday's show, right? Hey, we trying to raise Guru to not be homeless either, man. Yeah, that's a good I point. I want Guru to have a home, y'all. Pearl Jam. Yeah, I hear that, man. Club, Eddie, y'all go a dollar for a million of you guys donate a dollar. <laughs> To the Guru Fund, so I will have a home, baby. Let the Guru live, so I could give you all this hot Guru fire. <laughs> well, Guru, I went to. A, I actually got a chance to go to both concerts this week. They played two God shows damn, at Safeco Field. How many homeless did you give home, so man? Uh, hopefully enough, because <laughs> uh, I literally gave them money outside the stadiums. I gave them. So I had a chance to go to Wednesday's show, which was great. And then a, a buddy came through with an extra ticket on Friday, and the wife let me get out of the house on Friday too and go mm-hmm. see that show, mm-hmm. which was one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. So, so shout out to uh, to Mrs. Lastro. Uh, mm-hmm. Big big thank you to her mm-hmm. for uh, for watching watching the babe this week and allowing me hey, to go see both concerts. Shout out to Mrs. Lastro, man. She actually accepted my friend request, man, on Facebook. <laughs> I gotta give a shout out. Yeah, I'm in the family now, baby. I break through. You've been in the family. Family a while, brother. It ain't no problem. Through. Ever since, ever since little Lestro grabbed your <laughs> finger, was just like, I the like big. this one. Uh, you're, uh, you've been in. But that was my week, man. I don't know about you. I just so I'm tired from going to the concerts. I haven't got a lot of sleep. I don't care. I would do it again in a second. Pearl Jam blew my mind this week at I, Safeco Field. They were spectacular. Absolutely, man. I, I, the funny, it went by so quick this week. I don't remember. You have one of those weeks. I just don't remember what the hell I did. You know, I have a little trouble with that too. Yeah, hey, I just don't remember, man. Yeah, it but happens. I did, hey, but I did know one thing. We about to we about to get on this show. That's right. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that happened this week, Guru, is the NFL preseason Ooh, started, man. We 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 hot fire. I know it's like you said, it's like Ouch. Christmas for you, brother. Yes, it's, uh, it's getting closer. You know, it's like you know the count. Before Christmas, actually, you know, you have that that December fifteenth uh-huh. when you know it's coming. You start to feel it. You know, it's all you downhill. Know. That's what's happening right now. It's like 
the the commercials are coming now. You know, there's no more Halloween's nonsense. No, so no, now no. the football commercials are coming in now. You know, you're hearing the NFL films background. You know, yep. So the uh, the stations is not showing commercials. Even my social media feeds. I mean, hits. I mean, uh, officials. Every time you hear official complain, it must be football season. Must be football you season know? coming up. I, I see flags and everything talking about official did this. Oh, must be football season. Well, <laughs> well Guru, I was surprised. I didn't get a chance to see any of the games this week because I was, you know, at Pearl Jam. Oh, of uh, course. But uh, helping the homeless, doing your community service. Right. That's it. I'm. Helping. Not because you're there to enjoy the show. Not at all. You were there no. for the funds. I wasn't. I wasn't wasted singing along. I was there to help. That's that's what I told the wife. So um, anyway, we uh, in the football season. It seems to me that apparently the Browns are starting to make some waves. The hype that I've seen that start is that Baker Mayfield's going to win Rookie of the Year. Guru. What? Hey, the thing I love about the football season and the preseason, everyone is zero and zero. <laughs> everyone Hope is a everyone. Super Bowl contender. And then we always going to have the MVP. There's always that one guy who's the MVP of the preseason. So that means he's going to be Hall of Fame. Right, obviously. So this week now, Baker Mayfield. And you know, a lot of people say the guru have a beef with Baker Mayfield. He don't like the Baker. No, I'm not saying I don't like the Baker. But I'm just saying, pause, time out, take a chill pill. Not a book from Aaron Rodgers, no. No. I'm just saying, pause, P. A <laughs> U S E. Let me repeat that. Don't relax. P A U S E. Double vertical sign. <laughs> <laughs> so press that double vertical sign on your screen and just relax. What well, do you even think he's going to start? Or you think it's going to be Tyrod Taylor's team? I think Tyrod Taylor should be the starter. Um, obviously, he's a veteran. He's been there. He's accomplished. Um, his resume is done. His resume, what he has established so far, warrant him to be the starter. Obviously, with Baker there, he should look over his back because you have the number one overall pick. He is the number pick. one pick. You know, Tyrod knows legitimately he's playing for another team. He's not playing to stay in Cleveland. No. So that's why I know Tyrod is going to put his everything in there because he knows. He's a professional. He knows how the business work in this industry, I mean, in this game. And he knows because of him being number one of all, Bill Baker, there will be a time regardless, even if Tyrod is playing lights out, even if Tyrod is the MVP candidate, he won't be a Cleveland Brown quarterback in the future. Right. This is going to be Baker Mayfield's team eventually. Absolutely. It's just a matter of time, Absolutely. really. Absolutely. So what Tyrod is basically playing for is a, 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 a basically – to be a placeholder because you know who else is gonna is gonna be needing a a, a starting quarterback probably next year them boys in Miami <laughs> <laughs> you know that boy because I don't think Tanny's gonna make it doesn't so. seem like he's gonna be their guy I can see Tyron Taylor being that guy uh, basically being those bridge type of quarterback you have in the league you know Great what he locker makes room guy. he makes a lot of sense in Miami if you think about it too he, that, that that's a good look for him I'm down there you, I'm not saying lay uh, the guru is no proponent of people losing their jobs and franchise quarter, but I am a proponent of people getting jobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the other stories that came out of this preseason in the first week is that uh, is that Andrew, one of the other ones is Andrew Luck is back and throwing the football then. Now, he seems to have shaved his neck beard in favor of just a mustache, which I don't I don't know, man. I got to tell you, I don't know about you, but unless you're a porn star or a firefighter, I don't trust a white guy with a mustache. That's just, it's just my my experience. Don't trust a white guy with a mustache that's not a porn star or a firefighter. You know what? But it's, 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 there's a lot of reasons why I don't trust a white guy as well, but mustache is one of them too. It, it doesn't but, look right. <laughs> it just does not look right. But Andrew Luck is such a f character. Yeah. You know, I kind of, he, he's one of those guys, I want to have him like in an anime, like he's like a character, like I, he shouldn't even be human. You know, <laughs> his voice don't sound like a human voice, his whole movement, he just sound like something that should be animated. Right, you think he, somebody acting like Andrew, Andrew Locke Locke, is what yeah. he is. You know what, we should, there might be a brain or engine in there and he might be a robot, dog. He might be Will Ferrell, actually, yeah. might be the, uh, it was, as a character Will Ferrell's doing, uh, is Andrew That's Locke. what I'm talking about, get that look. What, well, did you see him play at all? And, yeah, and they play the Seahawks, man. How do you look? Uh, he look? He's, he's, he's getting there. I is think Andrew Luck is a great quarterback. Um, I think the Colts are going to make sh great strides with Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is an elite quarterback. I don't think it's, it's arguable. I don't think it's something to debate. Well, when there's he's a lot healthy. of worry about him being injured and coming back. Do you think this season is the one where he gets back to being Andrew Luck? I, I think this season is going to be the season. That obviously, he missed a year and a half, so it's going to be some growing pains. Mm -hmm. uh, but I see them, put it like this, I see them finishing better than they start. All right. That's the only thing I could say. 
You know what? That's because the way that you want to finish. That is going to be a competitive this division. Absolutely. And we're going to have a lot of guys in that division that's going to be coming after Andrew Luck. A couple more uh, preseason questions. Uh, Lamar Jackson putting on a show down there uh, behind Lamar Flacco. Lamar Hot Sauce Jackson. What do you think is going to go on there? Is that the same sort of situation that Baker Mayfield? Uh, is is it? Oh, should Flacco be looking over oh, his shoulder? Absolutely, man. Joe, get that heist money, Flacco. I'm always a proponent of people stealing those checks, man. <laughs> and I'm telling you, Joe Sing, Flacco, well man, he took that Super Bowl and got that bags, man. Yeah, and he man. never looked back. But you know what, Joe? I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You deserved it. You deserve, when you win a Super Bowl, you deserve four years of being worthless. <laughs> Unless, let, you know, it's just, look at look at what happened with Eli with the Giants. You know, you deserve. Once you win a Super Bowl, eat that, take that money. The goo is all about getting that check. But after a while, you know, you got to earn some checks. And I think Joe Flacco's days of um, getting that Baltimore uh, right, right, Ravens right, right, right. check are numbered. I agree. Uh, I, and it's not because... I think Lamar Jackson is all, all be all. I think he's, I've seen this before. You know, I want to see a little bit more for me to make any type of decision with him. I've seen this before. Being a rescue, I've seen the RG3s. Mm -hmm. You know, I've mm -hmm. seen the athletic quarterback. I've seen the, the Randall Cunningham, the Michael Vick. I've seen all those guys before. So he's nothing that I could say I've never seen. No, no, I've seen him before. But now I want to give him some time to see how he's going to develop. Uh, because honestly, I think Joe's gone. I think that organization with Ozzy Newsom retiring, I think it's going to be a change, a clean house. I they got to do something different yeah, down there. I don't think Harboy is going to be the long term effect. So uh, I think there's going to be a whole bunch of changes. Just watch out for Baltimore Ravens for the next year or two. I think there's going to be a lot of transition. Now the other uh, the other story coming out of uh, preseason this week is uh, is your former team because we know that you look uh, you look great in lavender now with uh, following Kirk Cousins. You like that? Oh, but I like that. <laughs> following uh, your former team, the uh, the Redskins, their uh, running back, Darius Geis, uh, was injured yeah. and is out for the season now. And, you know, man, as people you might know, if you guys don't know, the Redskins, you know, it's the Guru squad. But right now we're on separation. Uh, right. We're filing, uh, we're divorce papers filing because of the separation of my quarterback, my cousin, my best cousin, Kirk Cousin. I feel like they made the wrong move. And just the curse of the Redskins. Irreconcilable differences. Irreconcilable differences. And they almost, almost did make me sign the divorce paper, but the, the, the lawyers, is, they didn't, I don't want to talk about my laundry, <laughs> about my dirty laundry right now. Uh, but what I'm getting at is the Redskins are the Redskins with Darius guys going down with an ACL injury. Um, they are who gonna, they're, who they're going to be. And throughout the year, me being a, 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 I used to be committed to them. And kind of, sort of, because with paperwork wise, yeah. I am committed you to. Yeah, you're still there. Yeah, I'm still committed to. It's hard them, not to. But I will let you guys know why they are a miserable organization. Surprise, surprise. Uh, so, Guru, the question then becomes with Geist going down, uh, there's a lot of questions about should they be playing preseason games? Is it the kind of thing that, that is necessary? Do we need to have these? As, as a former player and, and knowing the players, Tell me a little bit about the importance of the preseason and whether or not it's the kind of thing that maybe we should think is shortening so that we don't get these kind of injuries. Like I said, the preseason is predominantly for the younger guys, the guys to make a name for themselves. Prove themselves. Yeah, make the, the guys, team. That's all the hard work. And the guys you don't see about. The guys that don't have the multi-million dollar contract. Right. The guys without the Campbell suit commercials. Because those guys make a living. Those guys do exist. Yeah. You know, you have the practice squad players. You have the third string. You have the four corners. You have the third linebackers. Those guys do have family. They got kids. They got a mother. They got a father. They got expenses. So uh, the preseason is needed for those guys because that's what it's there for. But if you're, if you're a legitimate contender, like a Super Bowl roster, like say the Vikings with Kirk Cousins, mm -hmm. majority of those guys are just there to showcase for other teams like the Dolphins, who probably going to be the worst team in the league. Uh, you didn't uh, hear that from me. Yes, I, you did. Yes, you the did. The Dolphins. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Oh, my God. The heck out of here. The Dolphins look terrible. The Dolphins are terrible. All right. So, Guru, you can think that the preseason continues, but you wouldn't start your starters. I mean, it makes sense nah, not starting out with Smith. Your star the, you got to play your starter. Like, game here, game there? Yeah, at least uh, what they say, the, the dress re rehearsal. That's like right. number three. See, game number three. Because you can't not go to game one. Right. Because that's you. your body got to go through that as far as competition against somebody else, not just in practice. So you won't get injured. So it's necessary. All right. I guess we'll see what happens as we go on. We got four weeks, Guru. Four weeks till the start of the NFL season four again, weeks man. weeks till that Christmas gift is open, man. I can't wait for I can't wait for that first game in Philly. 
I can't wait to let Philly fans go crazy. Them birds, man. E A G L E S. Eagles. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry, that was a reflex. I didn't. I didn't even realize that Skull. was gonna happen. <laughs> Well, Guru, you mentioned Christmas, and uh, and you know Christmas is actually dominated by the NBA. It seems like the NBA Adam Silver owns Christmas. Woo, we got it? the uh, we got the schedule this week for the NBA, including the Christmas schedule, which is just bonkers. It is a great schedule: Bucks, Knicks, uh, OKC at Houston, Sixers, Celtics, Lakers, Warriors, and the Blazers, Jazz, rounding out the night. That is a great day. Hey, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, right? I love how the NFL owns Thanksgiving. And you know how the NBA, NBA owns Christmas. And I got Christmas, baby. So I just want to say, first of all, apologies uh, to Lil Lestro. I know it's your first Christmas. I'm sorry I missed it. But did you see this lineup? I got I got NBA games to watch, buddy. <laughs> you'll, you'll understand someday is, is what I can tell you. Uh, but, but, Guru, we've got a special guest this week to talk NBA with us. We've got Himes, the director of content at the Sports Me app, who's going to talk a whole lot of NBA with us. So, uh, so what do you say we head over to our air interview with Himes? Let's get it. Trash Talk Radio. TTR. <laughs> Trash Talk Radio Guru, we got a special guest with us on the show today. We got Himes, the director of content from Sports Me, here to talk a little NBA with us. Now, I got to tell you, we did a little pregame with this guy, and I found out some terrible, terrible news about him. It turns out that Himes is a Boston sports fan, and somehow you still invited him hey, on the show, Guru. You know what? I should have gone back to TTR um, briefcase, man, in the past and talking about your rant you had about the <laughs> Boston fans. Oh, I you, went had, off. you had an hour long show about every <laughs> fuck Boston, beat Boston, fuck I'm, Boston fan. I don't, blah, I don't know blah, what blah, he's blah. talking about, man. So, I, I, hey, it, I was know, excited okay to me. have you. Hey, it's okay with me. Remember, I just do the ring count and realize, you know, we're all good over here. See, that's why. That's why. That's why. Himes, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Oh, man. It's like another day in paradise, guys. Man, it's good to be with you. It's good to cause a ruckus with you guys. I've seen a lot of your guys' stuff. I love it. I love what you guys do, and I love the fact that you guys allow Kurt because man, I fucking hate going on the radio not being able to say crap about anyone. Hey, well, hey man, we hey, what's our model over here? We're not we're Disney. We're not Disney. <laughs> we got we're not we're not working for for the network for the mothership. We're gonna do what we gotta there do. There we out go. Here. The mothership, the man. Mo- you sound like you're an Illuminati conspiracy <laughs> theory. <laughs> it is. It is ESPN. It's hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> so Himes, you can find Himes before we get this started. Let's tell the folks where they can find him other than Trash Talk Radio. They can find him on Instagram at Himes World. They can find him on YouTube at Alexander Himes. They can find the sport. Sports Me app on Instagram or the Sports Me page on Facebook. And you should go get the Sports Me app at GetSportsMe.com. It's a place for you to get in there and debate uh, with other sports fans and uh, and get your voice heard as well. Thanks hey. for coming to our show, man. Hey, the guru is on Sports Me, hey. man. So the guru won a couple of battles, man. So I'm, I'm, I can't wait to battle some more people out there on Sports Me. So I'm Ooh. all about them Sports Me, man. Go get that Sports Me app. Let's go, guys. Come on. With a name like the guru, the man sounds like he knows what he's talking about i guess we'll find out right now i guess that's the case huh well hi i know uh, we got you here to talk a little nba because the nba revealed its uh its schedule for the season it's been another massive off season for the nba and you actually are talking to us today from out there in la so you have yeah, a huge place to be right now la like my man biggie said right man i thought it was gonna be philly Ooh, for a while up. but turns out yeah. la is the spot to be right now now, so Himes, uh, let's start with the big news out there. Is uh, is LeBron coming to town? Just give us your thoughts on LeBron coming to the Lakers. Is he going to make them relevant? Because they've been bad. <laughs> oh man, you know LeBron coming to the Lakers is the best thing to happen to the NBA since 2010, when the Lakers managed to win and steal the one NBA. against my Celtics. Yes, you know <laughs> I got I got to level with you guys. You know. As a Celtic fan, at first, you don't really want to see the Lakers do well. But then you get kind of tired of it after a couple of years of watching the Lakers literally uh, sit in mediocrity. And I'm like, you know, the NBA is great watching the Celtics play well. But really, the NBA is at its best when the three best organizations in the league, and I'm counting the Knicks on that one. Yeah. They're trash well, still to do As bad way. as they are, the Knicks need yeah. to be in that uh, And argument. when we say oh. three organizations, I just want to make sure we defense right here. Three big market organizations. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. 
It's yes. all about business here. We know in TTR, it's all about that check. So let's just understand. Ooh. It's all about that check, correct? Well, it's also about the... It's uh, all about the money, man. Yeah, but it's also about the, the history and, and the game itself. You've got the Lakers, the Celtics, and the Knicks. Those are the big names in the NBA, if you will. And the league does well when they do well, you know? Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, so it's true about history. It's true about the history, but let, let's be let's just be honest. Like, even Philadelphia, I'll count Philadelphia because of the history behind it, if we're going there. But, like, if we're going just big market value, Value. Los Angeles and the Knicks are the two big value teams. Absolutely. Think of those as like grade A. Yeah. Boston isn't necessarily a big market, but because of the history, because, because of all the other sports, sports that are there, there, it makes them a grade A market team because the fans are just nuts. Yeah. The fans so, are just nuts. And, and this you have grade A media because that's what also makes it a, a that's market. A good point. It's the media. The media capacity and the media coverage makes the market. So is that is that a true state statement? Yeah, 100%. I mean, think about all the guys that talk great about Boston, even though they're the legends of like, like 20 years ago. No, I, I, I make a point to talk about Boston because, you know, we talk about the Knicks and the Lakers having great markets, and it's because of their cities, their locations, yeah. and whatnot. Boston isn't necessarily like that in a sense, but it's because of the rich history, what they can offer. The Like, when you have Danny Ainge come up to you and basically say, do you want to don the Celtic green? It's more than just about being in Boston during the crappy weather of the summer. It's about being there. Or the crappy weather of the winter. <laughs> I wasn't going to shout it out like that, but I mean, if we're going to put it bluntly, <laughs> yeah, it's 100% crappy. I mean, why do you think people stay in and watch their Celtics games right. or the Red Sox games or their Patriots games? Or occasionally when they're really drunk enough, they watch their Bruins games. Oh, they beat but, me too, and I was going to say, I just assumed they were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, Himes, <laughs> let me ask you about the uh, about the uh, the LA market that they they moved to out there. You know, my argument all along has been that LeBron made a business decision. This is not a basketball decision to move to LA. I mean, it's going to make the Lakers a better team. But what do you think? This was a business decision by LeBron, Absolutely. right? This had nothing to do with the team. He walked away from now. Cleveland didn't make an offer. All right, Let, let's just put it like that. Yeah. But Cleveland could have offered the most money because of bird rights. So that's eighty million in difference that he would have gotten if he like said, you know, I do want to stay in Cleveland. But he came to Los Angeles, decided to take less money, and why is that? Because there's so much out here. He's got Blaze Pizza. He's got the marketing to do uh, uninterrupted. He's got now full time to be doing film yep. shoots in Los Angeles in his off time. Yeah. I mean, this was a business decision. But think of it like this also. It's the end of his career. People don't want to talk about it, but I'm sure you guys can understand why I say this. If you watch LeBron enough, watch him when he goes up to dunk. He doesn't get up like he used to. There is a significant difference, and people don't want to acknowledge it, but it's true. So this is a decision also for his future. Yeah. The time, all yeah. wins. Look at the squad that the Lakers have. Although they're young guys, right, and we've all talked about how they could get Paul George or Kawhi Leonard or literally any other name that was available in the market because it's the Lakers, obviously. Yeah. They didn't get it, but next summer they're going to go into free agency with all this money and a bunch of rookies that will play well this year because LeBron's there. Yep. They'll up their trade value. Had those stats. They can turn those guys. Yeah, like this is an investment in LeBron's future. It's him basically saying, yes, my career is winding down. I just had the best career statistically that I've had in what? This is his 13th season. This was his 13th season. That was more than that. Wasn't it like 15? Given one or the other. Yeah. One, one or the other. This was his best statistical year in the latest yeah. year of his career. So he's got a bunch of young guys, young talent. He's got a KD equivalent who's up and coming. In, uh, oh, watch no, it, no, watch it, 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 watch it. Come on, man. Hang on, I want to see the no, name. No, no. Which name? No, no, no. I know Ingram, what you're saying. I know Ingram. Brandon Ingram. All right. Come on. I was making sure he no, wasn't no. saying ball. No, no, come on, man. Every year statistically, Ingram has gotten better. Look, man, I always reiterate that I'm a Celtics fan, but when it comes down to basketball, basketball is basketball. Like, you got to give credit where it's due. He's got Kyle Kuzma, who's on the up and up. Like, he impressed everyone being the, basically the steal of the draft. Absolutely. So, the so, well, you know, so maybe what, maybe the second steal of the draft. So what Tatum you, at three So what are you basically be. saying, Alexander? What are you basically saying here, man? Are you saying the Lakers are going to win a championship in this in LeBron James' contract within his contractual I think, term? I think that the Lakers will get at least one con uh, one ring within LeBron's contract, but they need to get – this year is the honeymoon year, right? Mm -hmm. This is his first year in Los Angeles. He's with a new coach, new system, new team, new mm -hmm. everything. And another so, thing I want to say about that new coach, I don't believe he's going to be the coach when everything is said and done. Oh, really? To finish everything, yes. Luke because Walton? there's a history of LeBron. Wherever LeBron goes, it's been a history of that, that LeBron brings his own guy. You think uh, Tyrone Lue is going to... I'm just purple? saying, LeBron is not the easiest guy to coach. And I'm going <laughs> to tell you something about Luke Walton, all right? Because LeBron is coming out there with a baggage. When you sign LeBron, that means as a coach, you better watch yourself. Not just history of showing that. Yes or no? 
I mean, I thought you were going to go with the whole statement that Luke Walton was the coach that was there before they brought in the new regime of Palenka and Magic. So I think it's more likely not that LeBron basically gets him fired. I think this is a t- this is a test run because Luke Walton has made the Lakers significantly better, but we don't know how he's going to mesh with a LeBron James. So this is the year that it's a honeymoon. They're be- giving him a test run because you know why LeBron what the what the Lakers break up is the whole package of LeBron. It's not just the basketball player yeah. LeBron. That's what I guess people got to understand. Yeah, LeBron, no, no, it's like you, him, his guys, his yes, coaches, his players. Everything. Exactly. You're getting LeBron input for every player move, yeah. every player development, every player movement, every input as far as the games, the lineups, the scheme, the setup. That takes a toll, especially on a young coach like a Luke Walton. Do I think he got the fortitude to be uh, to be that coach? I don't see that. I think they're going to have a more of an experienced guy because, frankly, I don't think LeBron respect Luke Walton as a coach. I don't think – I think Luke Walton got to earn LeBron's respect. And I, I think, think he's think got he a shot will, at it, though. And I don't think he's going to be the head coach at the end of this contract. I don't think he's going to last that long. Well, Luke played with uh, LeBron and Cle- – uh, no, he didn't. It was exactly. the year after. That's what it was. It was the year they after. He played. Well, you know, I – I think that it's a little too early to judge, honestly. I just – I think Luke Walton has done a good enough job to warrant, you know, we'll give him At the least trial. a full season. Yeah, they yeah. give him a full year. They let they let it go. They let uh, let this play out, see how it goes, especially because it's the first year where they don't have any other marquee guys they signed. Every, you know? every first year where LeBron has been, it's been historically, every year, every stop, there's been a drama with the coach. Where have you been from? Spoke? Yes, there was Spoke with the coach. It well, was, yeah, it was, didn't get fired. Yeah, he, he just didn't got get the fired. Yeah. No, <laughs> it was it was basically the the um what's the name over there? The GM that basically put Pat Riley is the one that had LeBron in check. Yeah. And LeBron, and then he had he also had D Wade, which helped him out to get over the Spoke hump. But you remember the little elbow bump? But he didn't even talk to Spoke a couple of times. You remember Pat Riley sat them down and said, "Hey, this is my guy." And then that's what changes. But everywhere else you've gone, LeBron always bicker with the coaching staff. Always. Till he gets his guy. And that's why I still think Luke Walton still has the backing of Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka. They've been around him enough. They've gotten to see him grow as a coach, coach even, even when, when they, they weren't, weren't there the season, season prior to that. They, they got, got to see last year's season. season. They, they, they know, know this guy can coach. coach. Like, like, it's not, it's not, not it's, it's not, not a bad thing. thing. Luke, Luke Walton is, is a good coach. coach. He is, is a player's coach. coach. He understands the new schemes. I mean, hell, he got a better record with Golden State than Steve Kerr. And obviously, I preface that with Golden State is an auto engine, basically. You can yeah. any coach, basically. But when you get a better record than the head coach that's there, that still says something to me about what you're doing with the team. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I, I like to say, who's more valuable, LeBron or Luke Walton? Oh, definitely LeBron. Uh, he's because uh, he's gonna outlast it. So if LeBron said, "Hey, Magic, I, I want a different coach," what do you think Magic is gonna do? I'd say the most valuable player would be Vladimir Rodmanovich. Throwback to two thousand seven, <laughs> uh, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, when the Lakers gave us uh, Banner seventeen. Much appreciated. <laughs> Thank you, Vladdy. Uh, All right. So, so Heim's bottom line it for us: Where do the Lakers finish out this year? Do they make the playoffs? Do they okay, make a run? Look, What's the deal? Look, look ESPN. ESPN uh, uh, All right. Without being. Uh, a full asshole. ESPN is fucking stupid for saying they're going to miss the playoffs. Let's put that number one. Yeah, absolutely. Of course they are. We say that all the time about them. Yeah. I've contended that the Lakers will be, for a first year of having LeBron James, a fourth seed. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if they get third. That is a high seed. Well, yeah. I mean, think about the other teams. Portland was a three seed last year. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but also remember that the other teams that were in third, fourth, fifth, and sixth were basically one game apart, and it was also because of yeah. divisional differences that gave them the advantage. Look, we know Golden State is going to be a rocket number one, especially now that Houston's taking a step back. So Houston's going to be probably number two because they'll shoot you out of the gym, even though Carmelo Anthony is going to be a dead ball possession every other possession. <laughs> no, that, honestly, they got worse. You're not worse. wrong, man. You're not wrong. They they got worse. Like they were winning. They set an NBA uh, their team record for 65 wins this year. They'll, they'll probably get maybe you know anywhere between 56 and 60 that's that's relatively safe for them and i think the lakers fall somewhere between uh 
three and four. It wouldn't surprise me if they get three, but I think safely to say for the first year of LeBron James in the honeymoon phase with all these young guys around him, they get the fourth seed. I'm going to disagree with that. I think they make the playoffs, but I don't think they have a, the home advantage. I think they're in the lower half. I think they're in the five to eight seed. I don't think they. I don't think they. I don't think they host a first round game. Uh, then who's better than them? Game. You know what? We'll see as the season goes. I but think I just, Utah. Utah got. I think a, Utah's, Utah's got a shot. A I think Portland can sneak in. Nah, I, Portland is done. I don't believe I, in Portland. New Orleans. I think there's. I think any of these teams can get hot <laughs> no, no, no. at the right time. Okay, that's where I'm going to call you right there. Utah, I think, would be the flip team, the 3-4 team with the Lakers, right? Like, mm-hmm. it'll go either way with mm-hmm. those teams. New Orleans, they were great last year because they had my old friend, my favorite guy to watch in green in the last couple of years other than Paul Pierce, which was Rajon Rondo. Mm-hmm. He was really Play the reason. Rondo. Now with the yeah, Lakers. Pe- people don't realize I that Rajon Rondo, Rondo was outplaying Drew Holiday. Although, don't get me wrong, Drew Holiday is a great player, but really what made their system click is they had a guy who was a true point guard, and then they had a guy who could play off guard, and they meshed really well. So they're getting worse. You know, uh, Damian Lillard and CJ ended up running into the playoffs last year, getting basically pounced on by the uh, the Pelicans, and it's like, well... Now that KD's told us, you know, enjoy your playoff seating. You're not really going to be going far in the playoffs. It doesn't matter. It's like, well, now they realized everything. They're back to earth and reality, so they're not going to be as good. So that's why I think the Lakers will fall somewhere between three and four. All right. We'll see as the season plays out. Now let's I, I, let's move kinda, over to the you East. You know what? It's kind of he didn't say anything about OKC. Yeah, I noticed that too. Actually, he didn't say anything about OKC. Between that's why I see the Lakers more like more, agree more with you, Lestro. Uh, closer to the five six range because I see OKC basically coming out third with getting that third seed. Utah probably flipping with the Lakers between the fourth and fifth seed. That's what I see more than the third and um, fourth seed. Well, let's. Uh, I, got, I got OKC. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, I just want to say this. I I do have OKC at five though. That's what I have. Okay. Well, let's move over to the East then because this uh, the East the is the East is the other side of the country. Oh, it's, so uh, what? It's, there's a, a bunch of teams over there fighting oh, you for mean, it. You, you mean what? The two teams? Oh, well, you, you mean three teams over there? Got a handful of teams in the uh, East uh, that are going to fight. So I want to talk before we get because I know we got uh, some limited time that we're going to run up against here. So what I want to ask you about before we uh, move on is is about the other big trade. We got to talk about Kawhi going to the Raptors and, and Rosen going to the Spurs. Mm-hmm. Does this make the Raptors better and does this get them over the hump or do you think your Celtics are still the team to beat because obviously you think you don't think it's the Sixers I know that I will say that the Raptors got a lot better mm-hmm. they now have a grade a option to build their franchise around there's that's no slight against DeMar DeRozan I love him I love watching his game I loved his story with Toronto but look Kawhi Leonard when you have the option to get the second best player in the league when healthy mind you you do it, especially when it's like a one for one trade. If you look at the yeah. trade, it's really one for one. Did you just say the second stuff. best player in the league? You one healthy. Uh, one well, healthy. I, I, I got to make sure I heard that again because it's, <clears throat> I just got a phone call from KD. I mean, <laughs> I just, I, I just got a, I just got a, you know, a DM. You know, KD loves DMing. Was it him or was it his burner account? I just account? got a DM from KD saying, um, "My man Alexander just said some crazy shit." <laughs> Well, hey, you know what? After this show, put this on Instagram. Shout him out for me because I want him to understand something wholeheartedly as I say this. Kevin Durant, you are not the second best player in the league when healthy. Kawhi Leonard is a two-way player. I am sorry. That's but the once difference. you are able That's to get difference. that second part of your game down, I, you can be the best jump shooter of all time. You can be the guy that rides the coattails of another system. You can be the guy that goes to a 73-9 and nine win team to win a championship, walking away from what is the equivalent of Oscar Robertson for this generation generation and still not be the second best player in the league which oh my gosh you did and you are not the second best player in the league i love it you Get broke it through your head. you broke the guru whoa, himes whoa 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 excuse me do we when do we start implementing drug testing <laughs> For i know i know it's legal in los angeles and in california but jeez my god well, you know, I that actually, gotta be straight from dubai weed right there i gotta buddy. tell you something man i think himes makes it's a good, good point push. hey you straight smoking with my man Josh Gordon over there. That's the real suspension we you on because you talking I, some nonsense. I actually think he makes hey, some sense man. here. I think KD it might be the greatest offensive player, but the kid don't play him a lot of defense like Rosen. Not, not greatest DeRozan, offensive like a, player of all like time. Hey, let me tell you the X factor here, okay? Okay, there's two sides to this. Yes, you might not play the defense, right? But guess what? He gonna put up 50 points and he might allow 25. So at the end of it, he wins the numbers game. All right. So at the end of the day, no one, no one is gonna be able to defend Kevin Durant. No one in the league, including Kawhi. All right, all right, all right. Let me remind you, 
if you had to pick a game of one on one, KD versus the Claw, KD. I'm going to tell you right. No, <laughs> not at all, because the Claw is going to lock him down. It's the defense that makes a difference. Remember that old adage, defense wins championships? Well, Kawhi Leonard is not just a defensive stud and defensive player of the year, he was also a finals MVP, and the reason why the Spurs were able to beat. Oh, I don't know. The best player in the NBA in LeBron James Ooh. in Miami when LeBron was younger and healthier and had a better squad around him. Oh, my God. I like this guy. You know Guru. what? You know what? Hey, pass me. Please pass me whatever these guys mean. <laughs> <about. laughs> All right. Well, let's get back to the East then. Are the, are the Raptors the team to beat with Kawhi or is uh, or is it your Celtics? Is it my Sixers? Or What's it, going is on Is it my East? Wizards finally going to step up with uh, uh, Dwight Howard? What's it, going on? It's definitely not the All Wizards. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So after the show, <laughs> go, go on my Instagram real quick after the show and look up the Dwight Howard meme I made. It's a clip of Dwight Howard it. saying that I see yes, right. right. Himes so, World on Instagram. Check him out. Hey. Himes World on Instagram. I reposted. <laughs> I reposted a whole bunch of it. I like that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, this city, this team is where I want to be. All right. Dwight Howard is not going to make a difference. I love John Wall. Big Blue Nation shout out. That's my thing. But I got to say, the Raptors are a second to third seed. And the reason I give them a third seed potentially is because they're implementing a new coach, new players, yeah. different system. Like, yes, of course, he was in the system and they got rid of Casey, but Casey was really a face of that along with DeRozan. So there's going to be growing pains. It's going to take time. But the Celtics are the team to beat from the two standpoints of, look, they went to the Eastern Conference Finals last year without their two best players, mind you, who are all-star players, one of which won a ring with uh, LeBron James and quite frankly, was the reason why LeBron won that ring with that clutch shot. And two, because the Celtics have the most interchangeable system and Brad Stevens. So we got to give credit where it's due. We got to give credit where it's due. The favorites in the Eastern Conference to come out of the East right now, as Jalen Brown said it best, is the Boston Celtics. Then I have the Sixers in second. Because, I'll take that. Yeah, you know, no, no, no. For what the Sixers have been doing and for the playoff run that they had, they're still young. It's mm -hmm. up and coming. You know, you got to build yeah, up still what you're doing. Last year, I, last I, year they were early. I mean, that team should not have been yeah. where they were last year. So getting that experience under the belt and moving forward from there, I think they're a dangerous team. And I don't. They may not have put together the kind of off season that a lot of people thought they would. But at the same time, if they get Fultz back, if he comes back shooting like Fultz did when they drafted him, that might as well be the offseason pickup that they absolutely. need. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, also, mind you, look, they picked up Wilson Chandler, who everyone sleeps on. Remember, Wilson Chandler was the centerpiece. Point. I like uh, Wilson, Chandler, <laughs> Wilson Chandler was the centerpiece of that Carmelo trade along with Denalio Gallinari. And look, Wilson Chandler is a baller stud. And pair that with the potential interest of Jamal Crawford. Look, the Sixers – are retooling. They're getting better. They're getting, yes, they got shooters now. They put they yeah, That's yeah, what they're dude. doing. They're getting shooters around them. They they are building a team that's very much catered to what they're doing offensively. So that's why I give them second place in the East. And, and as, as much, much as, as I, I hate the Sixers, Sixers for them in the Celtics Celtic rivalry, rivalry, look, I gotta, I gotta give credit where it's due. Like Brett Brown uh, went through years of being the process, and look at what it's gotten. We all knew he could coach. He came from the Popovich coaching tree. Like there's no doubt in my mind he could. See, so this is that time where they're up on the up and up. And then, you know, the funny thing is, if you remember, I predicted this a while back on, on TTR that the, the team that's built to beat Golden State is the Sixers. Is the Sixers. Yeah. You know, I've said this live from the last year and False. keep going on. I think this team that's built, because I don't see Kyrie lasting with you guys. I think the Boston is only good. Kyrie is an X factor. Without Kyrie, you guys are just a very well coached team. You guys are not the best team. They beat us not without Kyrie. Kyrie. No, like I False. said, very well False. coached team. But let me finish with that. Let me finish with that. So I Sorry. think I think um, Philly, because of their length, uh, because you know the gel, everybody's staying yeah. there. Uh, the one key thing is, and obviously they all play the position, positionless basketball, but just the length of Philadelphia, I think that's what's going to cause the biggest problem uh, for Boston because Boston is not as long. Mm -hmm. That's one. And, and Golden State is also, that's their deficiencies. Uh, a team that's long and also as athletic, and obviously Joel Embiid is going to be the one X factor. Just like KD is unguardable, Abib is going to be unguardable in every level. No one in Boston could guard him. And there's no one in Golden State I could handle him. So those two are going to be the two X factors. And I see Philly and Golden State in the finals. Well, Himes, you talked about this rivalry here, the Sixers-Celtics uh, rivalry that was sort of rekindled this year and, uh, and especially in the playoffs. The NBA is actually banking on that rivalry, man. Have you seen the schedule that came out for the uh, the upcoming season? The, the Sixers I'm stoked. And, the Sixers and Celtics open the season against each other, and they play on Christmas, man. What do you uh, What do you think of the schedule that you've seen so far? I mean, far? that's the only team in the East, right? There's, there's those two. There's yeah. the Raptors. There used to be a team in D.C. that no, was pretty it good. Is, 
it's basically <laughs> it's the Sixers and Boston, and then you have every other players. Then you have players in the rest of the East. Yeah, that's true. Then There's every, one team you guys haven't mentioned, though. There's one team you haven't mentioned that I, I, I can't believe. Toronto? Atlanta? No. They're not going to be a oh, contender, Indiana. but like they're going to be a... Oh, well, Pacers. Oh, yeah, Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Let's Indiana not Indiana forget the Pacers. Great. Yeah, but I'm thinking Milwaukee. Now that uh, uh, Jabari Parker is gone, look, when <laughs> he was drafted... No, 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 think about this for a moment. When Jabari Parker was drafted in that draft with Wiggins, those two were the A-plus players that everyone said were going to be, like, once-generational players. Mm -hmm. Milwaukee got that guy, and in the same draft, they managed to get the Greek freak, all right? Mm -hmm. No one expected the Greek freak to be this good, and everyone had these high expectations for Jabari. Jabari's gone through these two ACL tears. It's been unfortunate. Now that he's gone, though... There's no question of who's 1A, 1B on scoring. 100%, it's Giannis's team. 100% Giannis's, Giannis's team. team. And that means they're going to have a much easier time offensively, especially with this new coach that they now have a full half season, at least under. And now there's an accl uh, they're acclimated to what this guy wants to do offensively and defensively. Their team is good. Chris Middleton is a good second option. Like, they're a team that can cause trouble in the second round. They're the equivalent – just better than the Washington Wizards in the sense that when you go in the playoffs, they're going to give you a run for your money, but you'll still overcome. So I'm glad you brought up the Bucks because they are also highlighted as part of the Christmas Day schedule uh, yeah. and, and a major team that's there. And they will also be playing a team that has a new coach, which is uh, the Knicks and uh, and Fitzdale coming in to, to coach the Knicks in there. So uh, what do you think? Uh, let me. What do you think because, about? Because well, basically, you see what's going to happen: the Bucks playing the Knicks because the Greek freak is going to be a future Nick. You know, it's just an easy transition from get out of and, Milwaukee, and and, and, and Kyrie's gonna be a Knicks, so like it's easy too. transition from. So that's all. It's just it's just foreshadowing. The guru already told you what's gonna happen. New York, just like you said, the NBA, and this is from you too, Alex. You said the NBA likes um, L.A. and New York and Boston and all this. Let me tell you how the NBA is gonna salvage New York. The Greek freak and Kyrie going with uh, with uh, the, the the unicorn. I'm telling you, now you have a stupid contender. And in that New York. kid they picked up uh, this year, who's uh, slipped my mind, that did so well in the uh, in the, the the summer league for them. Kevin Knox, Knox, Big, Knox. Big Blue Nation, hey, dude. And that guess kid what? Play. And then I said before saw, he'll be in the discussion. And for then rookie. I know the attorney of sports would love to see that happen, man. Yeah, that, kid, <laughs> that kid's good. That kid can play. Okay, my only question to you is. <laughs> Whatever you asked that I was smoking, man, you were definitely on those drugs. Give me whatever you got, man, because I need something to get through this conversation right now. I, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unpackage this one for you real quick. Kyrie Irving is not going to the New York Knicks from the basis that there's $80 million at stake. You are the face of a franchise who is now the opponent of your old teammate in the Lakers. So you have so much riding on you being a Boston Celtic. And the only way that this man leaves Boston – is if Trader Danny pulls off a move to send him to New York, get some picks back, get some players, get something compensation because he will not let any player leave during a contract season. We've seen it with all these other guys, Avery Bradley, Jordan Crawford, all these other names get swapped out the year before. Season. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to put it past Danny Ainge to trade Kyrie Irving somewhere during the season. He made hey, the He made it without him last we, year. He can do it again. And the thing is without Kyrie, saying. there won't be a championship team. And there you go. False. All right. Well, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid we're gonna have to let you go, Himes. We uh, we uh, are running Damn. out of time on the show here. We're definitely gonna have you back, and we're definitely gonna do it when we get into that uh, that Sixers Celtics rivalry. Because you know, you and me are gonna go back and forth on this for the entire. Let's season. do it, guys. Let's do it. I love being on the show, man. Thank you guys for having me so much. It's been a pleasure. Our pleasure. And if you want to find Himes, of course, you can find him at uh, on the Instagram at Himes World. You can find him on YouTube at Alexander Himes, or you can go to the uh, Instagram and get the uh, Sports Me app on. On Instagram, the Sports Me page on Facebook, or getsportsme.com. Thanks for joining us, man. Hey, so great having you. You could also get, Thank get you them. Guys. You could get them at your local grocery stores, man. You could get them at the condiment <laughs> section. Heinz ketchup, Heinz mayonnaise. It's not Heinz. It's the other. I keep See, telling you. I got the best marketing play on the planet, man. I'm in every grocery store on the every nation. Every chain, man. Every barbecue. You can't have a barbecue without my man Heinz, baby. <laughs> Thanks Let's for joining it. us, man. Thank you, guys. Our thanks.
thanks again to Himes for uh, for talking a whole lot of mess about my oh, Sixers man. there. I'll tell you what, he is high on his Celtics this yeah, year. Yeah, you know, he's high on something, too. <laughs> I tell you, those guys, man, don't, you, you better watch out for those West Coast guys in Beverly Hills, man. They always high on something. Something. Man, it ain't life either, man, because he's high on some shit. I'll tell you that, talking all that nonsense. All that nonsense. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, our thanks again to Himes. You know we're going to check in with him as, as the season goes on. So, so Guru, let's take a quick break here, and we'll come back with, uh, with segment two. Uh, in segment two, you know we're going to talk about your top five defensive ends this week as we, uh, as we head four, in there. That 4-3 end, baby. Get that check. Get them check and get that quarterback. You know we're going to do the two-minute drill, and I got a special game time for you this week, as always. TTR, baby. TTR.